Hi, I'm Scott. Welcome back to Synth Stuff. This is episode six of the Korg Poly 6 Restoration and Upgrade. This is the final episode for the Korg Poly 6. Coming up next. This video is gonna be really good because I've already done it once. And this time I'm gonna to remember to hit record. So here we go. We're gonna talk about the Korg Poly 6 all over again for the first time. The Korg Poly 6 is a six note polyphonic synthesizer from 1981. If you wanna know more about the history and how it's laid out, how it works, go back to episode one and, and I kind of explain the history how it came about, its competitors, and go over the different controls on it. Now that we've upgraded this with a Kiwi 6 board, it works pretty much the same. Everything over here, where you actually change the sounds and, and create the sounds on it, is exactly the same. Nothing has changed. It still sounds like a Poly 6. It is a Poly 6. The only thing that's changed is this side. Patch selection, the controls, MIDI, that sort of thing, which didn't exist before. We'll get that into that in just a moment. In the meantime, the actual sound of the Poly 6 is exactly what you would expect. If you have used a Poly 6 in the past and you know how to create sounds on it, you can sit down at this right away, know exactly how to work it. If I put it in manual mode, we can hear our sawtooth, pulse width with adjustment of so modulate that. Sub oscillator. We still have the same beautiful, gorgeous filter. Envelope works the same. LFO works the same. It's basically the exact same as it was before. So let's talk about what's new. And I apologize, I know this was really nice and clean, but it's kind of getting covered in my greasy fingerprints because I've been playing it. So I guess I can't really apologize for that. So what's new on this? Well, back here we have two MIDI ports. Because it has that full MIDI implementation, we can play this, record it via MIDI, and play it back. And that's not just notes. If we want to play a cutoff, it will actually send that, that cutoff and the resonance and, and pitch bend and mod and everything else over MIDI. And then when you send it back, it will actually play it back over MIDI. So it allows you to capture a full performance on the Poly 6 for playback later and including anything that, that you do on the, uh, the controls that generates a CC. We have a whole lot of new functions in here. And of course, they had to kind of shoehorn all the new functionality into the buttons that we have here. And to do that a lot, especially in terms of the configuration, we use the tape enable button. Now the tape functionality is gone. So there is no way to actually load and save things from tape anymore, which is not that big a deal because we don't really use cassette tape for storage of sounds anymore. So instead, the tape enable button is a shift button. And when it's turned on, we can do things like change the MIDI settings, the channel. We can change the clock source from internal, which is this arpeggiator clock right there, or we can slave it to a MIDI clock. Uh, we can tell it to do a factory restore and wipe all our sounds. We can do sysx dumps and that sort of thing. The original Poly 6 had 32 storage slots for patches in four banks of eight. The new Kiwi 6 has 512. So how do we accomplish that? But each of these banks has two separate banks in it. So if I press bank A, we're now on bank A, but if I press it again, now we're on bank A2. So bank A1, bank A2, and each of those has 64 patches associated with it. So if I go to bank A1 and I wanna pick the first patch, I'm gonna say patch one, one. Now we're on patch one, one. And the original 32 factory patches are loaded in the first 32 here, and there's an alternate set of factory patches that are also loaded in here. So the entire A1 bank, which is 64 patches, has the original Korg Poly 6 patches in there. If I want to go to, to A112, I press 1 and then 2. 
Now you can see the one still flashes and the two is solid. That tells me this is the first digit, this is the second. If I go to one, three, same thing. If I go to three, three, you can see I only get one solid. And of course, patch three, seven, which is the patch called New Wave's Organ. That is the patch that when I heard it in Long McQuaid in Toronto in 1987, caused me to buy this synthesizer. If you know the song, you know the sound. So I have all those patches in here as factory patches and then all the rest of them are blank. You can write them with it, whatever you want. There's no way that I figured out yet to copy a patch from one slot to another because if I, for instance, I wanted to copy this into a B patch, if I go B and then as soon as I hit that, my original patch is gone. My A light there is a little flaky. I need to um, have a look at, I think this LED itself might be faulty. So that's, that's something I have to look at in the future. Um, so there are my patches. The Poly 6 has an arpeggiator. It's always had an arpeggiator. The arpeggiator has two main differences. One is that the state of the arpeggiator, so the range, the mode, um, is all controlled and stored with the individual patches. So if I select this patch and I just, you can see I'm set for one octave, up, down, the latch is no longer functioning. Um, I'll talk about that in a second. We turn on the arpeggiator, you would expect one octave up and down. It's not, it's only going up. And that's because it's actually stored in this patch that is up. So if I go to up and then back to up down, now it's gonna do it. Now you'll notice if you have a poly six, the up down is different because the original poly six did this. It played the bottom note and the top note twice. And now the Kiwi six uh, arpeggiator up down does exactly like you'd expect it, like every other synthesizer does. So that's a great improvement, I think. Because the arpeggiator runs either off this clock or the MIDI clock, depending which one we have it set to, we may want to set the, uh, the steps and we want it maybe one note on an eighth note or a 16th note. We can do that by going to shift mode, D8, and then we use the effects knob. You can see we're adjusting what uh, level we want, and it's listed in the manual as to what each of these means. Basically, this is slower, this is faster. So if I bring this up here, and then turn this off, and play an arpeggio, you can see it's much faster because I've picked a higher rate. And there are some values in there that actually have swing and, and different values in there. And again, this clock division is saved as part of the patch. So if you have a patch where you need an arpeggiator with a very fast uh, clock rate with a little bit of swing or something in there, it will save that as part of that patch and it's retrieved. Now that's if the latch mode is on. If we turn the latch mode off, we no longer have an arpeggiator. What we have is a sequencer. The new Kiwi 6 version of the Poly 6 can store eight different sequences each of those sequences can be 124 steps in length, and each of those steps can be a chord. So if you wanna make a sequence that's just six note chords, it will do that. Once we see the arpeggio button flashing, we know it's in sequencer mode. If we wanna change the clock division for this, we use the poly button. And once again, we're gonna adjust it by twisting the effects knob. So let's put that up there. We've stored one in there by pressing this, we'll play it. And you can see it's, it's actually sequencing through that, uh, that sequence that I had stored in there. There are eight, eight different patterns we can store. Right, right now we're on one. Now if we want to pick number two, okay, now we're on sequence number two. So let's wipe out what's in two. We do that by right enable on, manual to right. Now we've cleared out number two. The next thing we're gonna do is actually write a new sequence. So while we're doing so, pressing one gives us a rest, three and four back up and forward in the sequence so we can edit it. Uh, and then when we're on the last note, we hit bank five, which tells it this is the length of the sequence. If we're not gonna use all 124 notes, 
Seven and eight lets us insert and delete notes. So if we missed a note, you can actually edit it and shift all the other notes down, up or down, depending whether we're inserting or deleting. So now that we're in write mode, let's write a little sequence. Okay, so there's our sequence that we just wrote. Let's actually go back and we'll just change the last note. Now we're gonna say five. That's the length of the sequence that we wanted. And we can then say, write that into two. Turn off. So now we've written that into two. I found that it doesn't always work if you just play it like this. Let's try and see what happens. Yeah, nothing. So let's go out of that and we'll go back in. So let's go back and try it. And there's our sequence. We wanted to change the speed. There's some swing. So there's the sequencer. Very useful. It will trigger and sync with MIDI. Uh, it will play. You can start it so that if you get a MIDI uh, start transport, it'll play the sequencer. So very useful sequencer. It's really clever how they've worked it into the buttons and made it so that it's easy to use as part of the synthesizer. Now there is a vinyl overlay you can buy from Kiwi Technics that overlays this section and it has kind of all the other control functions listed on here. So instead of trying to memorize it like I've done here, you can actually see it on the panel. That might be worthwhile if something you wanna do. What are some of the other functions that we get? Let's bring it back out of sequencer mode. Now we're in regular mode. Uh, we have transposition. So if we go to tape enable, which is our shift mode, and then just pick a different note. So if I'm gonna play a C here, now I'm gonna turn on shift and I'm gonna play an E. Turn it off. Now when I play this, you can see it's transposed up uh, five steps. And when you're doing that, you can tell how far you've transposed by the lights here. You can see this one's flashing fast. Now it's flashing, flashing slower because I've gone up less. If I go down, this one starts to flash and so on. So whatever I, if I wanted just to transpose up uh, two notes so that I could play with the band without uh, relearning all my songs, you can now do that. And now it, it plays in the correct key. And if we just put tape and label on, press a middle C, now we're back to regular tuning. Uh, some other neat functions, the chord light will, I mean, the chord memory obviously functions just like it always has. And, you are, and you can arpeggiate that just like you always could. But when you s receive MIDI data, the chord memory light also flashes, giving you a, an indication that yes, some MIDI data is actually coming in. Uh, if you have stuck notes for any reason, Unison and Poly both also act as a MIDI panic that will kill all your notes. And of course the unison gives you that huge fat sound that the, the Poly 6 is known for. <laughs> It is mono out, so there's not a stereo output on it. And of course it doesn't have anything like reverb or delay. So you may want to get a pedal, or in the case I, I run it through my X32 mixer, or just add effects in your DAW if you're recording with it. The one thing that the Kiwi 6 does that I'm not quite sure what it's about is if you push the poly button twice, it starts flashing. 
I'm not sure why. It's obviously shifted into a different kind of mode, but I can't. It seems to work exactly the same. I don't know what that is for. I'm going to send a message off to Kiwi Technics and ask. Um, it's not mentioned in the manual anywhere. Unison doesn't do it, just the poly. So I'm not sure. We'll find out. So I did send off an email to Murray at Kiwi Techniques asking about that poly button and the flashing modes. He said it is switching between poly 1 and poly 2 modes. The difference between them is in poly 1 you get normal voice stealing. So if you play seven notes, the seventh note steals the first note. And in poly 2 mode, when you get to seven notes, it simply does nothing. So it only lets you play six notes. And at that point, you can't play any other note. So that's the only difference between those two modes. He said he's going to update the manual and make sure it gets in there. And that's it. That's the Korg Kiwi 6 Poly 6 project completed. Oh, and I didn't mention Centaur. The good folks at Centaur, they're really nice people. This is not a sponsored video. If you watched early on, you saw that some of the old boards that I took out of this, I donated to Centaur because they'll be able to perhaps fix them and use them to restore another Poly 6 for someone else. And Sam, who is just the, the nicest guy there, uh, sent me a t-shirt and then he sent me some, some stickers. Centaur is a great company. They restore old synths and sell them. They also sell parts. And for people like me that are restoring synths like this, they're a godsend because you can find parts at Centaur that you can't find anywhere else. And sometimes they will take synths that are not salvageable and they'll pull them apart and take all the parts out and put their parts online so you can if you break a, a, a c key on your poly 6 you can go to centaur and buy an original poly 6 c key from one of their salvaged keyboards fantastic company i really highly recommend them and like i said they're really nice people and that's my free centaur ad you're welcome sam thanks for the t-shirt and for the stickers i hope you really enjoyed this series as much as I enjoyed doing it for you. This was honestly a labor of love. I put a lot of time and effort to making this synthesizer the best that it could be. And I'm really looking forward to uh, creating some tracks with it, getting it back in my rack where it belongs and, and just using it for what it was intended for originally. If you have any questions or comments or suggestions, anything at all, please leave them in the description below. I read and reply to all of those. And if you do like what you saw here, want to see more like it, please click like, subscribe, click the little bell. You have no idea. It really, really helps us out. Why not do it just right now? Take two seconds. All right, so this is the end of the Kiwi 6 series, but it's not the end of the Restoration series. We've got another one coming up soon, so make sure you do subscribe and stay tuned. Thanks for watching.